people. Now, Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 638 on WML. Let's get right to Las Vegas. ABC's Alex Stone is there. The terrible accident yesterday that uh, killed Dan Weldon, an IndyCar driver at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Alex, we all remember when Dale Earnhardt died in that accident. What happened in this particular wreck? Well, they're still trying to figure that out. It looks like uh, you know one driver pulled in front of the other, and it turned into this 15-car massive fiery pileup. And uh, the video is incredible to watch of the cars flipping over each other. It looked bad from the start of this, and uh, then we found out several hours after it happened that the one car that, that just disintegrated the whole thing, Dan Weldon's car, that uh, that he had died in it. His car actually, it, it caught fire, it flipped over another car, and then it landed in a catch fence, kind of the system they have set up so that the cars don't go mm. uh, into the stands or, or into you know areas that they shouldn't go into. Uh, he was airlifted to a medical center here in Las Vegas where uh, we later found out he died. But he, it now looks like he likely died on impact at the, the racetrack. Uh, but they, they tried everything they could to, to revive them. There was concern by some drivers that the track was too dangerous. What do they mean by that? Yeah, very much so. They're, they're talking today that they think that, uh, and they had been voicing the concerns before this race, that practice speeds over 220 miles an hour. I mean, imagine that going. Mm. 220 miles an hour in, in the Indy cars that are open cars, they're low to the ground, that they said they knew that, that if something bad happened that, uh, it was going to be deadly, and, and that's what happened in this case. One of those people saying that is Danica Patrick, who uh, we all obviously know. She's reacting today. Very sad. Um, friend of all of us. Yeah, she's been very emotional, like a lot of the folks who have uh, come by and, and laid flowers and, and come by to see where, where this happened here. And uh, He survived. He has two young children, a wife. He was 33 years old. So it seems like it's really hit home with the, the audience of IndyCar, that you've got kind of the... A 30 to 40 year old male who watches this stuff and he's get saying you know wow i, I kind of relate to this yeah. all right alex great to talk to you thanks as always we appreciate it all right thanks guys yeah, alex stone live in uh, las vegas by the way he mentioned uh, the the video the video is amazing here here's how it sounded on abc television yesterday one thing he was worried about going into this race was all that dirty air created by 34 cars but right now the position he's in he actually has a small advantage because everybody else has opened the air up in front of him and even oh here we go be involved in it. And Eddie, you and I spoke about this this morning on the drive-in. Just this amount of cars, the speed, just the chance for what they call the big one. The big one, which is what they do. I mean, amazing that they said that right away and they knew right away that this one yeah, was, was different than other wrecks. It was big. And I used to cover NASCAR a little bit. Mm. And my dad was a racing enthusiast when I was growing up. I married into a family with a couple of Indianapolis 500 rings in it. By the way, really? my uncle in the family is an engineer. Cool. Uh, worked for NASCAR, so it's a it's a big family, and everyone knows it's dangerous. But when you lose somebody, it's really tough on everyone who watches and who loves these guys. Right. Well, it, you know, it's it's a double edged sword in the sport because people like the wrecks, they like the swapping of paints, they like right. You know, they don't want to see a car Rubin's go around. Racing, yeah, that's say. right. They don't want to see a car just go around in a circle, and it gets kind of boring. So they do what they can. Uh, to try and make it, you know, more exciting to the fans, and that is, you know, seeing cars race side by side, going around the turn side by side. Right. And uh, obviously, there were. Now, now we're hearing, although apparently there was some talk about this even before the race that maybe this track was a little bit too dangerous that the way they had it set up you were going to have maybe three to four cars lined up going around the turns at up to 200 miles per hour you get one car that gets bumped the wrong way then yeah. you could have the big one and that's what happened in this case well the, you know the speeds are so great in indie racing it's just incredible so I, I mean, now they're going to have to probably you know pair that back, um, and you know this is, but it happens. You know, you don't want to see death. You don't you don't see death all that often in professional sports, but the sport you do see the most in is, is race car. It still doesn't happen. Frankly, all that I'm surprised often. it doesn't happen more yeah. often. And usually, these things do lead to some innovations, which on one hand, race fans get upset because it does slow down racing, but then you get some things like that little flip up 
thing on the NASCAR that keeps it from flipping over, which they should have thought of like years ago, but it came up and finally got that instituted and saves a lot of lives. So.